welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Every day we break down breaking AI news stories and explain their implications in your life and in business. If you've been following the podcast for a while, you'll know that over the last six months, I've been working on a stealth AI startup. Of the hundreds of projects I've covered, this is the one that I believe has the greatest potential. So today I'm excited to announce AI Box. AI Box is a no-code AI app building platform paired with the App Store for AI that lets you monetize your AI tools. The platform lets you build apps by linking together AI models like ChatGPT, MidJourney, and Eleven Labs eventually will integrate with software like Gmail, Trello, and Salesforce so you can use AI to automate every function in your organization. To get notified when we launch and be one of the first to build on the platform, you can join the waitlist at AIbox.ai. The link is in the show notes. We are currently raising a seed round of funding. If you're an investor that is focused on disruptive tech, I'd love to tell you more about the platform. You can reach out to me at jaden at AIbox.ai. I'll leave that email in the show notes. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Over the last few weeks and months, there has been a lot of controversy and tensions brewing between Hollywood and AI. And just recently, Netflix stepped up a notch and kind of got themselves tangled up in this. So today on the podcast, we're going to be diving into what happened and why uh, Netflix put themselves into the crosshairs here. So let's dive into it. What Netflix has done that has gotten them so much flack is that a recent AI product manager position with a pay ceiling of $900,000 uh, was recently found on their website. And this ignited a firestorm of controversy for Netflix. So critics argue that it exposes a huge divide between the tech company's massive paychecks and also the comparatively small um, earnings of actors and writers. Uh, this isn't you know, necessarily just a solid, a solitary case. It's also, I believe, kind of indicative of a broader trend uh, in tech firms, which are really just racing to secure top tier machine learning talent. And despite this, I think that the ensuing criticism uh, that Netflix faces here really brings to the forefront of kind of an underlying, uh, something that's underlying in the industry, um, and that some people are arguing needs rectification. So Netflix actually has listings for several roles with machine learning responsibilities. All of them are carrying fairly decent sized paychecks. So an engineering manager um, in member satisfaction for machine learning, they have a function that is, you know, related to Netflix's recommendation engine, essentially, and you are able to earn between $450,000 and $850,000 for that. The salary range for an L6 research scientist in machine learning is between $390,000 and $900,000. And, you know, while a technical director in their machine learning R&D tech lab could make between $450,000 and $650,000. So even L5 software engineers and research scientist positions come with a salary range between $100,000 and $700,000. So this is obviously a really big contrast. Uh, when you're comparing this to the Screen Actors Guild, the SAG, who is on strike right now, um, and the members of the Screen Actors Guild, they average an annual earnings below $30,000 a year. So a lot of critics are arguing that this is a classic example of, you know, a tech company prioritizing machine learning capabilities over the creative talent um, that, you know, forms the, the bedrock of their content. So does this accusation actually hold water? That's the question a lot of people are asking. So while critics of Netflix's practices are very widespread, right? There's a lot of people criticizing this right now. I do think it's critical to remember that it is, you know, it's kind of straddled with two sets of responsibilities. As one of the world's largest tech companies, um, it's on the kind of the forefront of exploring AI's capabilities. Billions of dollars are funneled into this sector, um, promising advancements that really extend beyond just the generative models for art, voice, and writing. I think these innovation areas are also remain really largely unproven in delivering real value, and many companies are kind of wary of the potential outcomes. 
Something a lot of people are missing in this whole controversy is the fact that the AI roles at Netflix, right? These big, you know, $900,000 salaries or even $500,000 salaries that, you know, you're seeing these big ranges. Um, these actually don't pertain to content creation. So actually, you know, contrary to some people's beliefs on this, instead, they actually are for, you know, leading product improvements to understanding member experiences and developing novel personalization techniques. So they also include, you know, pioneering AI technology in the gaming industry and uh, devising algorithms for high quality localization. So machine learning's really huge applications from image processing, motion capture, um, network traffic flow, they become pretty indispensable for companies like Netflix, right? And so I believe that any company not making some very substantial investments in AI research really does risk falling behind right now. And I think you know, especially in a time when this sector is just absolutely on fire. It's so hot. This is what Netflix has to pay because right now they're competing heavily with OpenAI and, you know, they just raised $10 billion and even, you know, Google and Microsoft and Amazon and Apple, all of these, all of these massive companies are investing super heavily into this field. And if, ne if Netflix wants to compete, they have to start raising their salaries and offering competitive rates, you know, whether they like it or not, whether people are complaining that, you know, they should spend that money or give it away to someone else. If they're really serious about investing in AI, which as a large tech company, they should be, this is kind of what they have to do. So I think the advantage to being um, gained from a bandwidth saving compression algorithm or a perfection or, you know, a perfected recommendations engine, I don't think that can be understated right now. So um, if Netflix was able to save themselves bandwidth, and you know, deliver the movies faster, have less glitches, have higher quality, um, save time, save money on on all of this technology they have right now. I think that is absolutely um, indispensable. That's absolutely necessary. That saves them so much money. And perhaps one of these engineers um, is saving them. You know, is likely saving them orders of magnitude more than they're paying them. So it you know it 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 kind of makes sense. But you know, I think a lot of people. I uh, wonder if this really addresses the pay gap between tech and also the creative, you know, side of the industry. I think it's true that Netflix, like any tech giant, is, you know, always trying to stay competitive. I think you you have to. I think this is um, a lot of people are still complaining that they're not being competitive enough. They're not paying high enough salaries to um, to different uh, workers, especially in kind of the movie the movie industry and and they've seen some some downfalls from that so i think this is a really interesting conundrum that is currently playing out i think this is going to be interesting to see um what happens with the current you know the strike in hollywood and kind of the broader sentiment of the workers that are complaining that ai is going to take their jobs and definitely this whole um, issue of netflix paying ai workers a ton of money isn't helping those people with those concerns but i do think you know it is important to know that those AI workers are, you know, necessarily going and developing the next, uh, the next AI tool to replace uh, actors and actresses. Really, it's it's focusing on a lot of other things that are broadly helping Netflix as a company. So, in in any case, I understand where some of the complaints are coming from, but it's going to be interesting to uh, follow this story and see how Netflix um, continues to adapt and see how the industry continues to adapt to AI overall. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate us wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure to check out our Discord channel and Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can share software tools and prompts we're using in AI every day. I'll leave a link for those in the description below. 